What's going on guys? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a look at the new AI services that was included with the recent release of RetroArch 1.7.8. Now what this allows you to do is set up either a Google API or a Z Translate API and translate text in foreign games to either English or any other language that you prefer. In a whole, this really isn't that hard to set up, but you will need to create an account over at the Google Cloud platform and that does require a valid credit card, but they will not charge you anything. Or you can use the Z Translate API key. This does not require a credit card whatsoever, but you will have to create an account and they do have a character recognition limit of 20,000 per month. This video is not a tutorial, but there is a full write-up over on the RetroArch website and I'll leave a link for that in the description. Now this will allow you to either translate into text on screen or it can do text to speech. So if there's a Japanese game that you've been dying to play, but it hasn't been translated yet, this is one of the best bets. So this uses OCR, Optical Character Recognition. If I'm playing a foreign game on my PC, this works with Windows or Linux at the moment, I can set up a hotkey inside of RetroArch for either my controller or my keyboard. And when I press that hotkey, it will translate the foreign text that's on screen into English or whatever language I choose. We also have the option for text to speech or a voiceover. So this is really awesome and this is one of the coolest features I've ever seen come to any kind of emulation platform. The guys over at RetroArch have been working really hard. They do have a Patreon. I am in no way affiliated with RetroArch whatsoever, but I'm going to leave a link to their Patreon in the description. I recommend going over there and checking it out and if you can donate even just a dollar a month, it would be awesome. So we're going to get right into it real quick. Like I said, this isn't a tutorial, but they have a full write-up. The write-up's going to work a lot better than a video tutorial, trust me. Alright, so first up, I want to show you the text translation. I'm using the Google API for this. I'm going to start my little server here. We'll go with RetroArch. Now, <clears throat> inside of RetroArch, there's a new section. We're going to scroll down here until we see AI Service. From here, AI service output, I have it set to image mode, so it'll give me an image of the text on screen. I'm going with the local host. AI service is enabled. My source language is set to I don't care, but the target language I want it translated to is set to English. So I'm going to back up and we'll go with Surging Aura. This is a Japanese Mega Drive game. Now you do not need this running, but I wanted to show you how it calls out. There's absolutely no way for me to read this text on screen. As you can see, it's all in Japanese. But if I press T, it calls out for me and it translates it on screen. Destroy the world, the dark spell of law, the battle between the magician of light and darkness over this spell. So I'll press T, it pauses it so it gives me a second to read it, but when we're doing text-to-speech, it goes continuously. I'll press T again because that's the hotkey I have set up. I'll wait for the next text to come up. And I'll translate. So I really think this is amazing. It's scanning the on-screen image, and since I'm using the Google API, it's sending it over to the Google Cloud platform and pulling back what it thinks it says in English. I just think this is absolutely amazing. Now, I'm gonna stop this game and we'll go with text-to-speech. So the first thing I need to do is set the AI service to speech instead of image and then we'll get right into the game. The hardest part about using the text-to-speech is catching the text on screen. Like this scrolls automatically so it's kind of hard to catch it. You need to make sure it's all on screen before you press Destroy your hotkey. Destroy the world, the dark spell of law. The battle between the magician of light and darkness over Azler's this spell. Azler's holy war was settled by the defeat of the dark speller Luffy. The aimed brother's code was founded. And I'm going to skip ahead a little bit here. And by the way, I do have the game muted. As a sacrament of the kingdom of Pasfalda, you must have your father handle the spell. Please, escape to the Between the Curse with your father Mew and Sarah. Okay. I don't know how to do this. A curse that protects the door. 
Now is the time to make that commandment a source of holy light. Lada del Rey. Now I can't read Japanese, but I'm pretty sure that doesn't say Lana del Rey. So there are some issues here and there with the text-to-speech. I have found that on-screen text is a lot better, plus it pauses it so you have time to read it. There is a strong barrier on the door of this room to protect the spell. So as long as we are here, we are safe. So overall, except for our Lana Del Rey issue, I think the AI service in RetroArch is coming along really well. I just want to mention that the translation mistakes made here are not RetroArch's fault. We're falling back on the Google API or the Z Translate API, so that's where the issues are coming from. Really appreciate you guys watching. I just wanted to show this off real quick because I think this is absolutely amazing. The guys over at RetroArch are outstanding, and like I said, I'm leaving their Patreon link in the description. If you have time and you can afford it, think about becoming a RetroArch Patreon because this definitely does help out with their development cycle. If you want to set this up, there's a full walkthrough here over on the LibRetro website. Link is at the top of the description. Really appreciate you guys watching. If you have any questions or you want to see anything else running in RetroArch 1.7.8 or higher, let me know in the comments below. But like always, thanks for watching.